mark the start of Hanban's 10th anniversary year, the Confucius Institute for Scotland held a spectacular outdoor exhibition in the University of Edinburgh's Old College Quad. This exhibition is the Terracotta Warrior Lanterns exhibition and it's the uh, iconic terracotta warriors from Xi'an, from the tombs, put into lanterns to mark the New, new Year, the Chinese New Year 2014, which is the year of the horse. For 10 days, the figures shone out in the winter darkness, thrilling some 30,000 visitors and drawing huge media coverage. Now entering its eighth year, the Confucius Institute for Scotland was established in 2006 and officially opened in 2007 by Scotland's First Minister, Alex Salmond. Based in a grand baronial style mansion, the Institute stands as an expression of commitment to the relationship between Scotland and China. A statue of Huan Huan, the first Chinese student to graduate from a European university, stands in the grounds. The Confucius Institute operates as a partnership between the University of Edinburgh and Fudan University. I'm Natasha Gens, I'm Chair of Chinese Studies in the University of Edinburgh and also the Director of the Confucius Institute for Scotland. Professor Gens is supported by seconded Chinese directors from Fudan University. Currently, Dr. Jin Yu, mm. General Manager Francis Christensen and two administrative staff. The team is complemented by two professional language teachers and five master's candidates in the teaching of Chinese to speakers of other languages who come from Fudan for one or two years, helping to build a close partnership between the universities. To date, the Institute has welcomed 32 colleagues from China to Edinburgh who have contributed to the programme on all levels of teaching with tremendous success. Since opening, the language programme at the Institute has grown from 100 to almost 1,000 hours of classroom teaching a year. In addition, Institute staff are active in the university, delivering language enrichment courses to supplement the university's programme of Chinese language teaching. As a result, over 1,500 adult learners and 1,300 university students to date have benefited from the expertise of the Fudan teaching staff. And of these, ever-increasing numbers are opting to sit the HSK and HSKK exams. The levels achieved by excellent training in Edinburgh are manifest in the results of Chinese Bridge Competitions, a nationwide contest for all UK universities teaching Chinese. Since Edinburgh students first entered the competition in 2011, their hard work has racked up one grand prize, five outstanding prizes, three first prizes, four Beijing finalists and one global runner-up. But the Institute's work extends far beyond the classroom. We also do workplace teaching, video conference teaching to accommodate individual interests in businesses or the Scottish Government. Our curriculum also includes calligraphy, cultural activities or courses about contemporary China. Since opening, the Institute has built a high profile and reputation for excellence in its outreach work and educational programmes across Scotland. Sessions have taken place in schools, museums, shopping malls, workplaces and even in Scottish Government offices. We run a programme across the sectors of education, business and culture. We see ourselves as, a, as a, not a specialised institute but a comprehensive institute. Over the years, as the institute's reputation has grown, it has been fortunate to establish strong partnerships internationally with organisations such as Peking University Orchestra and the Beijing Film Academy, nationally with the Scottish Opera, National Theatre of Scotland and more locally. With um, the Edinburgh Zoo, with the Royal Botanic Garden or with the Edinburgh International Festivals. As an institute of ambition, its first cultural and educational endeavour was to hold Cinema China 2007, the first UK-wide film festival on Chinese cinema. Securing the iconic movie star Maggie Chung for both a gala event at Edinburgh Castle and a masterclass, its splendid programme showcased Chinese film art over a century and drew audiences of over 5,000 on its nationwide tour of 20 venues. Only a few months later, the Institute was commissioned by the Scottish Government to organise a 10-month nationwide festival. China Now in Scotland 
launch with a three-week-long lantern festival at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, which has a century-long history of collaboration with China. With over 150 events attracting over 70,000 visitors within one year, the festival marked a stepping stone in displaying Chinese culture across Scotland. A highlight of the festival was the arrival at Edinburgh City Arts Centre of an international touring exhibition of exceptional documentary photography, sourced by the Institute from Guangdong Museum of Art. The photographic exhibition was a big opportunity, I think, to, to show images of China which you normally wouldn't see. In 2009, the Institute innovatively presented a Chinese-language theatre piece for the Edinburgh Festival in collaboration with the Beijing Film Academy. The adaptation of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream as a spectacular multimedia production gained four-star reviews in the 2009 Edinburgh International Fringe. Marking the 2010 Shanghai Expo, the Institute designed a touring exhibition telling the story of Shanghai from fishing village to metropolis in a unique collaboration of academics working with Chinese and local postgraduate students. This was seen by around 45,000 people in venues as diverse as the Scottish Parliament and Edinburgh's shopping malls. While the Institute aims to bring Chinese cutting-edge art to Scotland, an extensive programme of more academic and public conferences and lectures are also part of its outreach programme. Since opening, the Institute has attracted audiences of around 4,500 to its educational and business engagement programme, run across 125 lectures and nine international conferences. Academic conferences have ranged across topics as varied as Old Chinese, the state and internationalization of business, to contemporary Chinese women writers. Most notable is the Business Lecture Series, now entering its third year, thanks in no small part to advisory board member Peter Budd of Arup. The series attracts high-profile speakers such as Chang Li Ming, CEO of BP China, Jim McCall, founder of Clyde Blowers, several members of the House of Lords, and renowned economist Jim O'Neill. China has become, for this generation, and certainly will be uh, for the next generation, uh, the single most uh, important economic national issue uh, for the whole world. The Institute was honoured to be elected to organise the 2012 European Confucius Institute Conference welcoming 200 delegates and sharing experiences. The principal of the University of Edinburgh received 11 presidents from China's leading higher education institutions and signed seven memoranda of agreement. This event also provided the platform to celebrate the Confucius Institute Scotland as a model institute and renew the memorandum of agreement between Hanban and the University of Edinburgh, showcasing the leading role of the institute in fostering cultural academic and business cooperation between the two countries. And once again, First Minister Alex Salmond was on hand to show his support. The arrival of the giant pandas at Edinburgh Zoo was a major achievement for China-Scotland diplomatic relations. From initial negotiations to the final arrival of these iconic animals, the Institute's director has given advice and opinions on how best to utilise this special opportunity to increase public knowledge about China. The Institute also runs regular educational workshops at the zoo for children and adult learners, marks Chinese festivals, teaches calligraphy and provides interpretation services. Our work is overseen by a strong advisory board, which we report to. That gives us a strong sort of base in the community because the members of the advisory board are from the Scottish community, from the government and from business circles. And we're also sort of strongly embedded in the university with its China strategy, which gives us a very strong support and backup. This is the eighth anniversary of our own institute, but during those eight years we've received six awards from Hanban 
five awards for being one of the top institutes in the world and very recently the principal received a special medal in honour of the contributions that the University of Edinburgh has made to the Confucius Initiative. Academically it's been a massive boon through the stimulus to our studies in Chinese relations and Chinese cultural activities. We certainly expect to continue to achieve the same level of excellence that we've managed in the past and we look forward very much to our future collaboration with Fudan and Hanban. We are very proud of being part of this network from its early beginnings actually when there were only 40 institutes, now there are more than 400 and we wish Hanban great success in its future development of the Confucius Institutes at its 10th anniversary.